Hey friends, Rebecca here, your Vibe Mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. Wanted to chat with you today about money blocks and the surprising connection between our self-worth and our abundance. And of course, abundance is our birthright. So why aren't we all living abundant lives? And I have stumbled upon very divinely orchestrated connections um, that bring to light a, a massive global challenge. And yet I'm so excited because as we discover the source of these issues, we can start to pull the weed. And of course, that is my gift and that is why I'm here with you. So there is something called complex trauma. And it sounds like this big, scary thing. Of course, traditional trauma, something like a car accident, is a one-time event that um, happens and passes and, and we're left with that um, trauma in our bodies. That is not what I'm talking about today. What I wanted to talk about is more around the theme of feeling unworthy. And that comes from, in our childhood, not feeling validated, seen, heard, or having our needs met. And of course, this is not about blaming. We give our power away when we give responsibility to someone else. So this is really more so about understanding what gets in the way of our abundance. What causes us to continue to struggle, to have these visions of a dream of life that we desire so deeply and so rightly because the divine has put that on our hearts. And yet we struggle to achieve the next level of success or the next level of, of financial security. And so going back to sort of the root cause is when we are, we're living in a home where we have busy parents and they're just not able to, to be present with us. Or when, heaven forbid, we were in a slightly abusive home where there's emotional abuse and your needs are invalidated. You're told that children are to be seen and not heard or even stepping it up another level where there's physical violence or sexual violence, where the, the messages ultimately at the end of the day are internalized and, and in, in the general theme of there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me, I'm broken, I'm not enough, and my needs are a problem. And so what happens is we, we ingrain this theme of not enoughness in our subconscious programming. As children, we are in ages zero to seven in the, the lower levels of vibrational mindset. And so we are in a programming state of mind. And the, the program that we receive is housed in sort of the reptilian part of the brain or the limbic brain, the part of the brain that's in charge of fight or flight. And so the brain discovers that your needs are a problem, they hurt you, and who you are is a problem. You will get hurt if you are seen, or if you uh, take up space, or if you are not enough, or you don't live the life you should. And so the brain, its job is to keep you safe. So it thinks, well, we've, we've learned the program of how this is gonna go. So what we have to do is create some safety mechanisms. We have to hide, we have to play small, we have to wear a mask, we have to be what they want us to be. And we learn, especially in those higher levels of a more severe trauma, physical abuse, sexual abuse, we learn that um, our nervous system has to stay in this hypervigilant state to, to be able to survive, to, to keep us safe and to prevent this horrendous pain that we've experienced. We have to um, hide our bodies. We have to really be meek and play small. And of course, that's the extreme level, but even at the, the, the most mild levels where we just weren't seen, or maybe our parents were extroverts and we were introverts, we still learn to deny who we are. And we learn that it's not safe to be who we are. And we, we inadvertently end up wearing masks and we suppress our needs and we, we feel that because there's something wrong with us, being seen for who we are is a problem. So we squash and we bury and we forget who we are and what we need. And the tragedy of that is that is the very thing that is going to solve the problem. Your authenticity, who you are, the things that made you come alive. What made your heart sing when you were a child that you no longer give time and attention to? That is your key right there. 
And so and I, our ability to tap into our abundance, our ability to be unique, to be a genius, to be a cutting edge leader, to be an innovator, to make a difference in the world, to make the world a better place, all stems from those core needs and that core personality, the passion that is part of your core personality that you suppressed. The thing that made your heart sing, the thing that made you feel like you were coming alive, the, the thing that turned on your cells and made you vibrate to the point of dizziness, that is the key to your abundance. That is how you step into the life that you dream of and out of this place that you may feel stuck in. And so what happened is the ego, it was initially needed to understand where you begin and end versus maybe the mattress that you laid on as a baby. But it, it took on a bigger role. The brain took on a bigger role than it was intended to, to keep you safe. We had to overanalyze everything. We had to figure out who we're supposed to be. We had to be hypersensitive to the people in the room so that we could gauge, is this safe? Who do I need to be? And we learned to put on masks, right? And the ego feels validated by, by achieving what the brain is defined we need to do to stay safe. Right? Okay, so society tells me I have to go to college and I have to get a good job and I have to drive this type of car and I have to live in this kind of house to feel okay. And so we put inadvertently all of the um, safety mechanisms and, and safety efforts into the brain and the ego where they were not meant to be driving the bus. They are supposed to be passengers and supposed to be serving us instead of driving us. And they, they kind of got out of control, and rightfully so. That's what it seemed like we needed to do to survive in the world that we grew up in. And what's interesting about this is the ego is, is constantly trying to prove I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm special, I'm unique. And it almost stems from, there's a small piece of it that stems from really a soul level desire to do the unique and, and super valuable thing that you were built for. And so we get kind of confused when, yes, the ego needs to die. And yet at the same time, the part of you that wants to be valued and loved and respected for being something unique and amazing and awesome is valid. And it's interesting how it sort of calls it causes a soul sickness where we can land in this place of maybe a dark night of the soul or the depression because there's this urge in your heart and in your soul that knows that you are built for something amazing that you are supposed to be doing something extremely impactful out in the world you are supposed to be making the world a better place because you were built perfectly imperfect for a purpose you are here for a reason you are not an accident it's statistically impossible and your soul and your heart knows that and so we we learned as a child that my desires and my needs are wrong and i should suppress them i should ignore them i should numb them i should distract from them but really they were your gift they were your compass to help guide you towards your purpose and so the, the, the ego, in a sense, is kind of assisting the soul in, in trying to drive you towards that thing that actually does make you a genius and makes you awesome and amazing. You are a Michael Jordan of something in your own right, right? And so the trauma and the not enoughness keeps our vibration low. It keeps us hiding. It keeps us from self-actualizing. And it actually creates resistance in the plan. And so in electricity, if you have resistance in a wire, it actually slows the flow of electricity. We are electromagnetic beings. The trauma is housed in our bodies and in our limbic brains. That's why we have to use somatic work to, to get it out of the body and out of the brain. The trauma creates the resistance that prevents the flow of the divine guidance that's going to fuel and support you growing into your purpose, tapping into your abundance, removing your money blocks. So that trauma in the body is the money block. The trauma in the limbic brain is the money block. And the biggest challenge is that we can cognitively understand this from our prefrontal cortex, the executive functioning part of our brain. We can understand it, we can talk about it. I can, I can tell you that the trauma equals money blocks equals resistance and inability to step into my life purpose. But yet, if I am not fully understanding of how to get it out of my limbic brain, out of my nervous system, out of my body, then it's going to remain there no matter how much we are aware of it. And so that's why I'm here. This is the work that I love. So the beauty of this is that we can start to see that the trauma makes us feel unworthy. The trauma makes us feel like 
we're not enough. The trauma creates these patterns that manifest in every aspect of our life. Guys, if you look at this list of just the 38 that I teach about, of how this manifests in our lives, you will realize everything you say and do and hear and choose and become is all run through this filter of trauma. You've got like this little trauma demon sitting on your shoulder barking at you. You're not enough. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't let them see the real you. They won't like you if they know you really. And so we have to create the awareness, do the somatic work, get it out of our bodies. And even just some awareness will start to shift this. You'll start to see how often does the thought of do I deserve this? Am I enough for this? Is this okay? You'll start to see how often that comes up throughout your day. The crazy thing is there's 10 times more than what you're able to see. When you have someone who mirrors to you and says, wow, I start to see that pattern of not enoughness coming up here. You'll go, oh my gosh, I never would have saw that. And it, it's for me too. I have to have a therapist who can do it for me because we we have so ingrained and, and integrated the voice of these um, peers or or supposed caregivers in our lives and again our parents are awesome and amazing and they did the best that they could um, but we internalize their voice and it becomes our own and without someone to help us see that it can be very difficult and challenging that's why we collectively need each other and don't get me started on what amazing things happen in the brain when we have connection that actually people are safe that we grew up in um, an environment that taught us people weren't safe and that's the unfortunate part because when we come together we are tremendously powerful and so there'll they'll be more on that in, in later videos but creating awareness helps us identify the mask that we're wearing and the patterns that we're living out so that we can remove the mask and start to shift the patterns to catch them and reframe them to revise our actions and to recognize I I'm hearing the voice of trauma and feeling like I'm not enough historically I would have not proceeded down the path of becoming authentic and pursuing my life purpose for fear of rejection for fear of being hurt but I'm not gonna do that anymore I see this now and I know that my brain is not always my friend while it's trying to keep me safe it's actually keeping me stuck and so we can start to make new decisions we can surround ourselves with accurate mirrors people who reflect to us our value and our worth who help us see that yes I have a gift and yes you have a gift and guys I've got really young kids four and six years old and they're every day we're talking about oh look at you love puzzles you love to understand how things go together maybe this is part of your gift and we talk about their gift so imagine what your life would look like if you started at four and six and even now it's never too late that you can go back to what made your heart sing when you were a child and that is the first step and all you need is the next right step and it will unfold like a lotus flower continuously. The beauty and the joy that comes with it is so incredibly amazing. That's what raises your vibration, your level of worth, your level of abundance, your level of feminine energy to be able to receive and allow. It's just, it's incredibly beautiful. And so what we do is we start to identify our purpose, we identify our value, then we start to give it away. This is the beautiful part is Ideas need to be shared to grow. They cannot grow in our bodies or in our brains being stagnant there. No matter how much we talk to ourselves, it's not the same as collectively coming together and having these conversations and sharing them with you. And I'll share with you that I've been doing this for close to a year now and, and I could not have put all of this together without talking about it for a year talking with people, sharing it with people, getting their feedback and seeing what they're struggling with. And so I share this with you because if you struggle and say, I don't have a gift, I don't know what my gift is, you can't figure it out from the level of thought. You have to take action. You have to engage with people. I have a course to support helping you identify your purpose as well. Um, but when we start to give our gifts away, we see the value of how impactful our work is on other people's lives. We change lives. We see how we can change the world. It's incredible. Your body literally like dizzy levels of joy and bliss and in the ecstasy because this is who we were made to be. You start to feel the truth in your body and there is nobody and no thing that can take away that knowing this is what I am built for and the level of worth that overcomes you the level of value and love and respect for yourself as well as the people that reflect that to you is the very thing that you were looking for to heal that trauma. It's, we've got this tug of war, don't be seen, don't be heard, 
but I want to be loved. I want to be respected. I want to change the world. Don't be seen. Don't be hurt. It's dangerous. You'll get hurt. And we've got this tug of war. And the, the way to break that, the way to stop it is to see that you are valuable. You are worthy simply because you breathe. You are a beautiful gift to the world. The world needs that gift that only you can offer. And when you start to offer it, there is no question of your value, your worth, or the abundance that is available to it, to you because you recognize your value and your worth and you're able to receive it, right? And so then we just live in the awe of the unfolding of the divine plan for our lives. Then we come together and we create heaven on earth. And so if you're dealing with money blocks, if you're struggling with any of this theme of unworthiness in your life, you have a vision or a dream for your life purpose, the way you want to contribute and be of service to the world, if you are struggling to get from where you are to where you want to go, I would love to support you in this. I have a 12-month mentorship as well as a course to support all of the different aspects of this from identifying the traumas to catching the patterns to removing it somatically from your body uh, to rewiring your neural networks to understanding how you are manifesting from this place all the time even if you don't realize it and then identifying your values and your gifts and learning how to turn that into a business to support yourself and your family and of course I do all of that over the course of the year because it takes time that this is not something that we can do in one session or six sessions that it takes a few months, anywhere from three to six, to really get a, a hold on that trauma and identify those patterns, and then another few months to identify your purpose and really get that business going before you're ready to take the plunge. So I love to build the foundation before we take the leap. So um, if you want to do that with me, I would love to. I welcome you to the family. All of you are beautiful. There is not a single one of you that does not have a gift and a purpose. If you have money blocks, this is likely why I have yet to meet a person who has not struggled with this. So you are not alone. You are not broken. You are perfectly imperfect for your purpose. There is not an ounce of you that is wrong or a mistake or broken. You are exactly who you need to be for the purpose you were created for. And I would love to help you bring that out and help you be of service to the world. So reach out, connect with me. I love you so, 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 so much. And I hope to see you on the next video. If you are curious about this, I do offer free 30 minute sessions where traditionally it, you know, it, it's supposed to just be 30 minutes about what we would work on, but I end up helping you spot your theme of, of trauma and unworthiness and, and identify the root cause of your, your money block in just less than 30 minutes for free. So I will link that below and I will see you on the next video. I love you guys. Namaste.